November 9th, 2022. I am at my most ready hour, a metaphoric hour, a state of readiness. I've been building energetic muscles to strengthen my ability to follow through with actualizing the desires I long to feel as part of my practice as consistency of care. Huh, consistency. This word comes up a lot in my writings as a quality that I am still creating deeper and more nuanced relationship with. A gooey delicious ride into reason and obtuse meanings along the way. What fortunes tell their times for substances and ways to create care for your own subtleties and calmer ways? You learn to pace yourself amidst the still, cool warmth of reason. Your delay in calmer care as the tempest roars fights the spaces you used to care about when your shape comes connected to the glow of your own sunshine. Make your marker as a kind of safe home you wish to share from and create comfort for others to feel they can come and go in good times and hard. The measured light of reason catches the edges of something you like to play at while listening to the softer cadence of your heart. Sometimes your heart beats and you shout your way to freedom from the old ways towards your youth. Space your care and often make your molds for sometimes things. Salivate your cozy comforts and let there be and become a baseline of safety. You come carefully connected with the calm of your own times, laughing wisdom in warranted ways. You current tend your safe regards and still the mass of comfort to care. You stay your wisdoms and create more space to come and go throughout your own times to connect. You fear your something tender and learn new ways to practice old ideas and how you could feel your life as whole, nourished, and loved. There is a baseline for connection you are cultivating, even as you practice new ways and find comfort in old dreams. How do you share your care and create home moments to be a bridge into belonging? You long to live yourself home and create the steam and stream your compressed screams into the space of tortured awareness to release your forgotten pain into permission to feel, heal, and make the matter of your space more capable of being inside of what hurts as needed. To speed up your practice and allow density to pour forth when the content is dense. It needs to be seen to sort through. You match your metaphoric socks and throw the old ones away. It's okay to discard what is taking up space that you need for more of your own space in your home. <sighs> End pages. Hello there. Ah, man. This week has been... This week has been a lot. <laughs> How has your week been? I have keep coming back in my pages over and over to just really wanting consistency of care and consistency of care. And I'm finding a lot of places crop up in my life where consistency is more erratic and care is challenging and wanting to get to like a fix it as opposed to just being with the feelings first. You know, it's a, it's a common thing for women to say, I don't want you to fix it. I just want you to hear me <laughs> to their partners, right? This is a common thing that I think a lot of people say or hear or, or feel or express. And I'm finding a lot of that lately where there is kind of this friction between wanting to get to a solution for a very reasonable reason. And then on the other end where there is maybe the friction or the lack of congruence in patterns or behavior or um, environmental experiences that what needs to happen first before 
the solutions are before there is even space for them is for there to be an attunement a connecting to the this makes sense that this is why it is the way it is first and let's be with the fact that the things that aren't working it makes sense how they got there and that can be challenging I think for a lot of us on both ends whether we really just want someone to show us that compassion and be with us in the you make sense part of the process or from the other side where it's like well we're still in partnership together we still have to find a way to work together I want to work towards our shared goals and shared values and it can feel like even though it might not be a derailment it can feel like a derailment even as being with that peace that simple slow calm patient peace can feel really hard for the person that's ready to go right we packed our bags, we're ready to go, let's go. And someone's saying, I need more help. I, I can't get out the door, right? It can be hard when you can see all the pieces and the parts that need to happen. And you just want to be like, okay, well, we need this and we need that and let's go. And the person, <laughs> this is a metaphor, right? <laughs> Might be like, well, but I, I don't understand yet. I, I need you to understand that I don't understand. And I need you to be with me and almost be with me in my dysregulation so that I can find you, as someone regulated within my dysregulation. And then that'll help me regulate. And then I can start to see solutions. And then I can start to feel like not frustrated with myself, not frustrated with the situation, not even frustrated with you. And there's a peace there that happens, whether we're dealing with other people or whether we're dealing with our own inner parts in our journaling practice, our writing practice, our embodiment practice, whatever kind of spiritual relationship you have with different pieces and parts of yourself. A lot of the work I do has been about healing religious trauma. I've never subscribed to religious doctrines. I've sort of kept them at bay but I still live in a society that has a lot of messaging that I've received throughout the course of my life that is swayed in a certain direction. And there are pro-social reasons for connecting a community around spirituality. And there can also be a need or a feeling that arises and crops up to let go of pieces of oneself in order to be compatible to that community and the the values, whether or not they align to one's actual needs and actual body-based experience of what safety, trauma integration, how that naturally happens. And so I'm learning more and more how to find a way to not connect around the concepts of religion without being ferociously angry. And I think right now I'm going to try to not be ferociously angry, but talk about my ferocious anger so as not to deliver my ferocious anger to or at those of you listening, because that's not helpful. But sometimes I do need to pour my ferocious anger somewhere. And everything that I do comes back to religious trauma, like everything I do. And I keep trying to find ways to talk about it without talking about it or to talk about it very directly or to like finding my way through where's my place in the world regarding this particular wound, because it feels like the work that I do both in my own experience, but also the work I do with others seems to keep coming back to this religious trauma experience and how painful it is. <laughs> and I don't know if that does or doesn't relate in your sense of understanding what I was just talking about versus this. And I think I'd even need to kind of sort through how to make those direct links, but everything I do keeps coming back to that. And every time I talk about something other than that, it's sort of like, and maybe it's just this concept that we need to quiet our demons or that we need to not pay attention to the things that are hurting us. And when really sometimes the things that are hurting us or the things that are slowing us down or the things that are causing the conflict are actually the, the very things that hold the key to our salvation, right? I'm sorry to say it like that, like with a bad taste in my mouth, but <laughs> I like a lot of words, they do make sense in the grand scope of things, but also I think they've been used in ways perpetually that leave a bad taste in my mouth. And there's this concept that we can't get our hands dirty sometimes, or when we do get our hands dirty, it's to 
to clean something in a certain kind of way. It's hard though, because then I get images and pictures of like brushing our teeth and the importance of oral hygiene so that our teeth and our gums stay healthy. Like this is a legitimate thing. Like we need to clean ourselves. Okay? We need to wash things away. We need to have a baseline of cleanliness in our lives. And also it is important to eat food and get our mouths dirty. I think that when we don't think of it as cyclical, as like, it's important to do both. It's important to experience the flood of inner demons and things we've been taught to fear or shame in ourselves or others and know that they're there for a reason, know that they're there as some sort of guidance, know that they're there to let us know where our values, our integrity, our self-worth are, where those things are, and to give us a cue or a clue into whether or not we are living in a pattern of self-betrayal. And so I guess I'm here to say that. <laughs> Part of me wants my stuff to just be light and easy and fluid and I can't seem to not come back to the hard stuff. The more I do just keep coming back to the hard stuff, at least in my own private practice, the more I get through to the other side. I find that at the basin of my grief is really a portal to joy and it is a feeling of being held by something, to be supported by something. And with my rage comes clarity around what is not for me and what I never want again and what I will not accept or allow into my space. So much of that fire has been very specifically about certain words that other people hold dear to their heart. And that's a hard thing to navigate out in the world where I'm like, the thing that you care about more than anything and that you use as a guiding light in your life is something I do not want in my presence. And I'm saying it, I'm practicing the saying of it while still being very clear with myself that that doesn't mean I don't care or love the person, their heart, their body, their instincts to even reach for the things that I have a very clear distaste for. But the thing that they are like, I love this. I'm like, no, it's my kryptonite. Like you can't bring it near me. I get that that is your orienting North Star and no, not in my presence. You go deal with that somewhere else where it's not going to hurt me. And I think that it's hard for people because sometimes they see something as the very thing that will help or heal me. And I'm trying to tell them, no, that's the thing that hurts me. And they don't believe me or they think that there's something wrong with me or they think that, okay, well then we just can't be friends. And maybe they're right with that piece. Maybe we just can't be close friends. That does make me sad because a lot of those people who are no longer close friends, I do love so dearly. And there's not a capacity or interest, I think, on their end to delineate themselves from what it is that they orient towards as their safety, their belonging, all of that. Rightfully so. You're oriented towards safety and belonging with something. Why would you give that up to be in relationship with someone else who has a very different sense of safety and orientation? We can only connect through the boundary. Some people don't want to even connect through that boundary and that's okay. But boundaries are so important and differences are so healthy. And I think that the more we can come into connection with actually connecting a about and around our differences and be with the boundaries of each other, the more intimacy and creative fluency we might be able to have, the more sustainable living and breathing and coming in and out of connection we might be able to foster in our own selves because we become a kind of contained experience of self. And those of us recovering from codependency and enmeshment and overfunctioning and people pleasing, (laughs) these are all things that I am really working on and towards and continue to, it's really helpful to orient towards our differences and to connect through the intimacy of the boundary, the connection and the space and where the separation is. Separation can be such a beautiful thing. And I know there's a lot of talk in spiritual communities about our pain comes from separation. I think oftentimes our pain comes from not acknowledging separation and trying to bypass separation into a glob of oneness or a unity of experience, which can feel really wonderful at times, but they're both important and they're both important to do in healthy ways. And I think oftentimes we'll go, to, we'll go for the unity in order to bypass the conflict as opposed to let's look at the conflict. Let's find a way through, see how and where our goals do or don't align with one another. Do we have enough in common of our own values and our own self-worth where we can still either spend time just enjoying each other's company in a certain way and or are there certain places we want to go or directions we want to head or, or kinds of environments we want to foster where we can be in connection with one another through that. So much of what I do in my somatic attunement, so attuning to my body and then stream of consciousness writing, I also like to bring that 
that attuned to my body and then stream of consciousness communicating with you and all of these projects I do, whether it's self-care for performers, which I work through a lot of how I'm going to show up there here with you on Pages and Process, or whether it's here with you in Pages and Process and finding, finding my consistency of connection. I really feel like this place with Pages and Process is a lot about finding the me and then learning how to share with you about me. And I go in and out of wanting to hold space for you to also come into connection with yourself, whether that's through writing sessions or workshops or little master classes that I do in my Patreon or prompts and worksheets and things like that, or invitations for you to share a bit about how you're doing. I love the relational piece. So I really am longing for more and more of that as things evolve. But I do also wonder how much perhaps pages and process really is just about my pages and my process and letting you (laughs) be a fly on the wall (laughs) bear witness and just practice my own showing up bravely and letting myself be in my own creative channel so that I can have an outlet to move through what I need to move through and then find ways where it feels good to connect interrelationally with a broader audience a broader following a broader way of speaking feeling like I'm speaking to one person right now but really landing in multiple ears eyes hearts uh as you find this so Anyways, so I have my little matcha iced latte. I want to give you a cheers and a toast today for this Sunday that I'm coming to you from. And I'm practicing more consistency for myself. I've been working my way up to this for a long time. I know a lot of makers and sharers, creators, they say, you know, have filming days and then have edit days and you don't have to do it all at once. But I was needing for my own process to do it all on the same day. Otherwise I was losing track of stuff, but I think I've gotten enough nervous system resilience to have found a ritual way of connecting with my media organization. So how I save and store the things that I film so that they're organized enough that I can come back to them on a different day and still feel oriented, grounded, know what's to be edited, what's already posted, what's in process and that whole organization, that like flow of stuff is important. Whether you're a maker and sharer or not, we all have different ways. We come in and out of connection with people and places and projects and work and community and interaction. And it can be really helpful to have a way of knowing that you can keep a sort of measured relationship with what you're doing and also still feel like you can come out of connection with it. And when you come back in, you know where you've left off. Sort of like when you have a book, you have like a little bookmark so you know where you left off, right? And sometimes we still do go back and we're like, oh, I don't remember that last part. Let me review. But huh, okay, I'm getting into teaching mode in this pages and process. At least for today, we're testing the waters on what if it's just me sharing. So I feel a little nervous. I feel more ready to be honest with myself about my own needs so that I can communicate them to others and to you. And I feel hopeful that I will be able to sustain showing up in the way that I've been building. Thank you for being here with me. I will see you next time. Bye. 